I hope you're all well. So this video is going to be about um, what are known as karmic partners, false twins, and another one that I like to call heart opening energy. So just to explain how I see these when I do readings and where it's coming from and what they're for and all that kind of stuff. So firstly, um, the way that we're looking at it is we have to look at the energy. So, um, this might be quite a long description, but I'm just going to start at the beginning and see where it goes. So, we've got here by incarnated two twins, one working from feminine aspect and the other working from masculine. Uh, as we know, both contain masculine and feminine, um, but one's working more from masculine, one's working more from feminine. Okay, and then they're coming from source, so source up here, which is higher energy, people call God, love, <laughs> oneness, you know, all these, because I say them all the time, and clarity, so it's really clear energy, um, it is a clearness in the form of knowingness, authenticity so truth and it's all that in vibration as well so it's all that source is the vibration of that clarity knowingness authenticity truth vibration of God vibration of oneness vibration of love and it's light okay so light and it's also fifth dimensional 5d so you've got two twins come down, incarnate, for individual experiences. So you come down appearing to be uh, an individual cut off from source for an experience of being individual. But at some point along the line, could be as early as you start to think, you come into recognition of one other that you're connected to primarily, and that one is known as twin flame. It can come in anywhere down the lifeline that you brought into awareness of that. Uh, so things aren't really as cut and dried as even this seems. So somebody could incarnate and not know anything about this until they were like 90 years old. And we'd call that them being initiated at that age into being an awareness of their twin flame. So just to say that as well. Um, and once you've incarnated, you start to think and dream and imagine, like daydream, I should say, fantasize. And in that... That energy from your brain <laughs> uh, goes into what we call the fourth dimension here, which is thought consciousness. Um, dreams, illusions, imagination, all that kind of stuff. Fourth dimension. And from there you manifest whatever you manifest into your life. So everything's energetic, right? Behind the facade, which is your human body, everything is energetic. It's coming from source. It's coming from thought consciousness. We call thought consciousness, we call it the dark. Uh, because it's egoic consciousness, we call it ego. Um, so just like we've got the light in higher consciousness, we've got the dark in thought consciousness. So fourth dimension, ego, dark consciousness. Fifth dimension is love and it's uh, higher consciousness is light. Okay, so you're creating always in fourth. If you're coming into, uh, anyone who comes into human experience is always connected to source, everyone, because that is the energy that runs you. So that's like the electricity inside your body and the vibration that runs you. You couldn't be alive if you didn't have source coming into you. When you, In fact, when you appear to die, it's only because you um, go back to source. So you've always got source in you, right? Um, so, so the energy, right? In this ego, we call it dark energy, but in fact, in thought consciousness, we have light and dark. Because everything comes from source, <laughs> comes into you, and then you project out into thought consciousness. So there's always light in the thought consciousness, because everything firstly comes from source. 
Here there's the, what we call the battle going on, the battle of the dark and the light. So it's a battle between the light, the higher consciousness, and the battle between the ego. So just to be aware of that. So everything energetic um, has got a, a polar opposite, ego or higher consciousness. And each twin has got inside the masculine and feminine energy. And what you call is your process is in fact... Um, the purging out of the ego and the coming into higher consciousness. So you begin a process as you incarnate and that process takes you through to the end result which is source consciousness. So you are the embodiment of source consciousness in human form. It just really means is you're connected to your higher self all the time and everything comes from that comes from higher consciousness is you. So everything that's here in higher consciousness is what you become. So you become self-love. You become that feeling of... Um, oneness that is understanding that everybody's got their own life path to leave and uh, lead and that it's not your responsibility to feel any one way about it because that's their thing and it's not your thing so it's the empathy that's also kind of live and let live energy of non-judgment that you come into all those things right authenticity truth unconditional love clarity knowingness full knowingness knowingness that you are source that you're connected to source yeah more than connected that you are source that's the end of your journey really that's that cleared energy so all twins are working towards that the whole time from incarnation right because you got journeying from so here's where we can come in with all these subtypes um your process we call it the purge which is a going from into the egoic consciousness here so this is where there's doubt and there's fear and where there's no connection to source and then back up into higher consciousness where you're in pure source. That's the journey. So you go between the two. A bit like one of those graphs at the doctors. You're going up and down until you reach the point where you're completely clear and you're pure higher consciousness. Um, so that is your process. Pretty much in a nutshell. But of course there's loads more to say but we're trying to get it done quickly so we're not here for all day for everybody's sake. So, um, so, yes, and of course this is the third dimension down here. Now, in terms of the lowest of the lowest of the low, this is the lowest you get. So, just let's clear this up, that there is no hell. In fact, if you want to make hell, you're going to imagine it, and then you're going to bring it right in to this dimension. But, of course, you can also imagine heaven and bring it right in, because in thought consciousness there's light and dark. Source is only heaven right so there's only light there so of course once you clear your path and you're at the end you, there's no dark energy in your experience at all you're not bringing any anything from this thought consciousness that's of a negative variety you're only in the light so that's just something to say as well so just be aware of what you're thinking about and what you're focusing on in terms of your imagination because you're going to bring in whatever you bring in from that to start with because it all starts with the thoughts and a corresponding feeling that bring it in. And of course, twins are clearing fear. That's what they come for. They come for the, it's called the battle of the dark and the light. It's clearing through fear and coming into higher consciousness. So they're doing it for themselves and they're doing it for humanity as well. So they're bringing everyone into higher consciousness through what they go through in their lifetime. So it's good to understand that as well. So that's the first thing to talk about in terms of this. And then we will talk about subtypes. So, karmic partners. So what is a karmic partner? Karmic, karmic means things that you're tied to, basically. That's what karma means, things that you're tied to. So if you look at it like this, in fact, let's use the same sheet, actually. When you incarnate, and you incarnate into a, a family or a... Um, a section of society, a culture, it could be anything like that. Wherever that culture's coming from in terms of where they're tapping into thought consciousness is going to be where a lot of the karma lies. So it might be a certain religion that you're tied to through birth, or a certain culture, or a certain just a certain way of seeing things and doing things. And then you've got in that, there's light and dark in thought consciousness because there's good thought and bad thought. So you might... in Incarnate into a family where it's very highly, um, you know, motivated to have a good time and feel good. 
or you might incarnate into a family where it's really motivated to just feel bad all the time you know um, at the extreme it's narcissism and that just goes for anybody that's alive when you're a twin and you incarnate and you're here to demolish the dark energy it's your life purpose it's what you've incarnated for so very often twins will incarnate into really what is a really restricted repressed dark energy so karmically it's going to be coming from maybe narcissist, a narcissistic family time timeline history maybe to do with religion maybe to do with culture some repression repression around feeling good so is repression around feeling good there isn't other, any other way you can be repressed basically taking you away from what's feeling good so twin flames often incarnate into this if they don't incarnate directly into it they're going to um, encounter it somewhere along the line because they're here to demolish that dark energy so your early experience might be dealing with the karma that lies with the family that you're growing up in so you might have that dark experience in the actual family as you're a young person if it's not coming from there the repression could be coming from a religion you're involved in a, a way of being schooled it could be coming from peer pressure because remember your peers are also your direct um, group your social group so it could be coming from there so karmic energy in terms of um, what it is karmic energy comes from egoic consciousness it can come from any avenue very often it's dark energy um, in fact the most of the times when we see it when we're doing readings and stuff it will come up as dark energy very negative um, sometimes it does come up as lighter in that when I've seen that it will come up in a feminine's reading a female variety where it's about having children um, but most often it's coming up as dark energy so you're remembering that you're clearing the dark energy so you're going to bring to you experiences from that dark energy so the experiences will be of bringing in you see you think it's all happening to you when it's in the early stages when people say things to you that are hurtful like in the playground when you've got a parent that's abusive when you've got um, uh, peer pressure or parental pressure or society pressure on you to conform into something that you're not you know look at um, homosexuals and the repression that's there in them not being what they are uh, that we've encountered throughout history all this kind of karmic energy very negative very suppressive very restrictive because you're a twin flame you're going to bring it so you bring it to yourself it's not because you're tapping in here to thought consciousness it's because it's karmic energy so it'll be coming from other people tapping into there but you being surrounded by it so it's their thoughts but it's where you're connected to them that it's coming from so it might be coming down your family line we've always done it this way in the family you, you know a box that you're expected to be in that you can't escape from if you don't do it this way we're all going to disown you you'll be disowned by the family that kind of energy and there you can see where at some stage in this process of clearing from dark to light some um, twin flames get involved in what are karmic relationships because it's a direct result of the pressure of the res restriction that's coming from outside of themselves from thought consciousness which is the dark energy that makes them venture into these relationships I like say with feminines females sometimes it's about having a child but literally when I see this happening there isn't in there in going towards this um, a conscious awareness of what's being done so feminines will go towards this karmic relationship it's almost like because you're here to demolish the dark your ability to see what the dark is is completely you're blinded because your purpose is to rise into source consciousness and clear dark so you have to go through these karmic attachments so you won't see what that person is so somebody you know could be in a go into a relationship, have kids, be in there for several years before slowly, slowly emerging into the light where they're coming into the heart, where they realize the person they've been with for all this time is a narcissist. It takes, you know, it'll come through slowly. The reason that is, so the reason for the karmic relate scenario is about coming into the heart. So always, karmic relationships. Karmic equals masculine. 
equals ego equals suppression equals resistance to feeling good um, equals being out of the heart equals not loving the self fully equals not doing what feels good <laughs> equals repression resistance etc right and then fem um, karmic and emerging into the heart heart opening learning to love themselves is feminine energy so the feminine's job is always to come into the heart right so that would be escaping a karmic relationship so you can't escape what is the repression and the resistance you can't transform that unless you go into it it's so only by going into it you will transform it and emerge into heart open loving themselves energy so very often feminines will have to go through that experience but like i say they're going into it, its duty when you talk about duty and obligation you see thought consciousness hijacks those words your duty and obligation is to follow the rules of society follow the rules of your culture do what your parents say do what your peers do shut up and get on with it ignore your feelings don't follow your feelings do what we say do what you we, we tell you to do right so that is where we've we've been led to believe duty and obligation is twin flames do have a duty and obligation but their duty and obligation is their birthright if you could you could say it's their connection to source their duty and obligation is the dismantling of the dark energy the patriarchal energy and the emerging into source energy and living from that energy so they've got completely opposite duty and obligation to the one that the society or the culture or the family is telling them they've got this is why you have such extremes on a twin flames life path feeling really low feeling really great really awful things going on awful situations events people but really great situations events people right because you're going through this journey of emerging from dark to light so you'll feel the light at times you'll feel the dark at times and everything in your life is playing a part in you learning that and you learning what is source heart open energy is source energy karmic energy is resistance it's not feeling good so that's what they're about that's how that's how they come about that's what they're for so they are everything this is a new mantra right everything is getting you ready so even karmic relationships are getting you ready so the thing to understand they're getting you ready to be in source energy heart open energy the thing to understand about karmic relationships is to let go just like when you go through one it, yeah it might be seven years and then you realize, oh my God, I've been with a big old narcissist all these years. And, I, and look what I've done to myself. Because it's crushing to be with a narcissist. Being with a narcissist takes you away from yourself. Everything about being with a narcissist tells you to not love yourself. T tries to like shut down your heart. It's all shut down in heart, shutting down heart energy. So what do you do about it when you emerge from it? You let go. You have to let go. It's not about the person. People are only a, a facade covering the energy. So you can let go of the person, but you can hang on to that energy of the pain from that relationship for a really long time if you want to. You've got to let go of the energy of it. So you've got to let go. You've got to let go of what went on, how you felt about it, what happened, what it did to you. You've got to let go of those terms of abuse. All right, that you were under from whatever that regime was, just like you have to let go of your childhood and whatever terms of abuse were there, whatever harsh words came from your peers, your parents, your school teachers. In any respect, it's all about letting go and moving through to higher energy, not hanging on to it, not, liber not um, laboring over it, and do what you can to let go. How do you let go? You move into more heart opening energy. So at some point along your line, of ascension you're going to encounter karmic in one way or another different for everybody in different degrees but then if you you were going to take it all in anybody's life journey and you were going to put it in a, a, a test tube and call it karmic energy they probably all would line up as being exactly the same amount it's just that some people have a spread bet going on where they have like billions of narcissists coming at them and maybe they don't go into one full relationship and other people won't have the billions they'll just go into one like really intense karmic relationship but it all equals out in the end we all go through the same amount of dark energy and then we've all got to learn to not bring it to ourselves by letting go
because like I say, you bring in what you bring in from the fourth, from the fourth dimension, which is thought and imagination, which is why um, as soon as you exit a dark experience, a dark encounter with a narcissist, you've got to remind yourself of the journey that you're on to emerge into the light. You've got to remind yourself you are constantly connected as source, as a high-level empath. That's your reason for being here, to demolish the dark. So I must let go and know that I'm protected. Let go, know that I'm protected, know that everything has been as it's meant to be, know that I'm moving forward into heart-opening energy, know that my life is going to rise into the lightness and I'm going to operate only from that heart-opening energy. Go with the flow, let go. Okay, what else can we say about karmics? Masculine energy, masculine energy will always be drawn to being in karmic partnerships. The reason are masculines are warriors, they are like soldiers, so when they come down to earth for the earthly experience... Imagine this, that they're in the helicopter and they're having their, deep, their briefing before they're entering into the war. And the war is going to come through the mind. It's going to come through just demolishing the ego, which is in the mind, that is in the masculine energy. So they're doing an insider work. So they're being dropped in enemy territory. And they're having the briefing before they get dropped down. And, they're being, and they've got a checklist. The sergeant major's got a checklist. And he's checking off all these things and he's like, okay, so you're going to have this relationship with this narcissist. It's going to be really heavy. It's going to be really intense. Do you think you can handle it, soldier? And they're like, yes, sir. Because they'll take on like the biggest, strongest narcissist they can handle. They'll take it, um, uh, you know, in terms of a relationship. So just to remind you as well, right, in this thought consciousness, we've got light and dark. So karmic, it can, meet the, it can mean the most extreme of a narcissist that's operating from thought consciousness, and that's what the masculines will often go for. Really hard, hard graft in terms of like coming back to themselves, coming back into the feminine, coming back into their heart after going through a really narcissistic relationship with somebody. Um, but you can also have in that thought consciousness, you can have a lighter energy, so it's not really narcissistic, it's just kind of, um, it's neither here nor there, right, so karmic, like I say, it can just be tied to like culture, and tied to the family, or the society, and for the feminines, often if they're female, it's just about having children, so it's not, um, it can be not so narcissistic, but yeah, for the feminines as well, it can be very narcissistic. But it's always something that's of lower. Karmic relates to the base chakra of a lower experience, of an experience that is unawakened, of an experience that has not arrived in the heart. So it's always going to be around that. It's going to be around what the feminine thinks is a logical, rational decision to look for a father for a child. Somebody that will match up in what their expectations are, their expectations which have come from the family, which have come from the culture, you know, but it's nothing about the heart. It's not about do they love that person unconditionally, it's about what kind, it's about will they make a suitable partner. So there's a lot of that that goes on with feminines as well, just not coming from the heart. So that's what karmic is, in essence, vibrationally. It's coming from those things, from thought consciousness in that way. It's all about clearing the dark. Everything's about clearing the dark. And an arrival in high energy. Anything else to say? I think that's it. Because I want to get through these. Right, so the next one is, that we we'll talk about, is what's called false flame. And what is this false flame? What does it mean when you're encountering it? False flame means they're getting you ready for the one. With the feminine, so this, right, masculine is here. There's so much you, that relates, right, to different to these different aspects of self. Feminine relates to heart opening. So they're here to open the heart. So you can always guarantee whatever experience that's coming in with the feminine is about opening the heart. It's about opening the heart to themselves first of all learning to love themselves and if you look back through your life you can relate all your experiences that you've had that are of a negative value to what was that for that was for me to love myself more so you could literally look back all down the path of your life you could look at all the things that were horrid and nasty and bad 
and all the um, interactions and all the events that were, were that, right? But the thing is, when you look back at those, instead of looking at them and dwelling on, that was awful, that was awful, that was bad, I hated that, that's a horrible thing that happened to me. Because uh, uh, uh. when you look back and you think like that, you're reproducing that energy. And of course, that energy is going straight up into the fourth dimension and creating the next thing that comes along. So understand instead that experience happened to me for me to love myself more. And every time you look back down that line and you look at something that went on that wasn't pleasant and you understand that that was about you learning to love yourself more, all you need to think about is loving yourself more. In that present moment that you're in, you're looking at heart opening. So do that in relation to whenever something pops into your head, calling for your attention that's about you not loving yourself or something that happened to you that was unloving through somebody else, tell yourself, I'm going to let go of that, and I'm just going to love myself more, because that's what the whole thing all the time was telling me to do anyway. So let me do it now, and let me keep doing it, because then you're in the right territory. All right, so just to say that as well, the masculine is here to, to delete the ego. So masculine is ego. So like I say, they're doing an insider job. They're coming in as masculines. They're operating from ego, which is a hell of a lot of resistance around them. So they will believe, um, actually, it's not quite true. They don't believe it. They know that there is something, they know what lies behind, okay? They know what lies behind, but it's like they've got all this programming that's about following the rules, following society, following the culture, following the parents, following the boss, all this stuff. And they try and fit themselves into a small square box with a big K for karmic in it. So they try be like these karmic people that work from thought consciousness. And in that, there is, they squeeze out their heart. They shut down their heart because they try to stay in their head and they try to control their experience by going along with the status quo. Like I say, squeezing themselves into a karmic shaped boss, box. So they're here for, they're here for kind of doing it in a different way. Feminine's working from feminine, masculine's working from masculine. Of course, you go between the two and you're connected as well. So there's a lot more to it than that. But just to say that. So false flames come in. What false flames are for the feminine. For the feminine, they're like an empty box. And an empty box. And in, in what does that mean to you? So... For the feminine going through an experience with a false flame, a feminine is looking for, they're coming at a certain time, right? So once you learn to open yourself to your own self-love through those karmic interactions that have come in, right? You've achieved maybe a certain level of understanding about self-love and you're in that zone and you're working on that and you're, you're knowing there's a feeling, right? You can feel this feeling, and it's feeling, it's love, it's unconditional love. And you know it's, maybe you've always known it's there. It's like behind the back of your head. It's like something that's just been pushing you forward, like an energy pushing you forward. And you're kind of in that zone, or maybe you're around that zone. Your energy is circling that self-love zone. And it's like you're searching for a feeling, right? But because everything in the, the physical matrix that we're that is um that we look that we're in uh like in relation to everything that's there that's coming from pretty much everything that's there that's in control or has been in control of the physical matrix coming from thought consciousness comes from fear this is where we're merging into the light and it's no longer going to operate from fear so where that fear is in terms of things like emotion and feelings these are these are, this old paradigm stuff is stuff about how you can't be loved unless you're with somebody and that puts people into fear because they don't believe they can be happy on their own so we're clearing all this shit from history that tells women women shouldn't be alone women are never going to be happy alone women will never can't love themselves the inability to love themselves you're only happy and healthy if you're in a relationship all this kind of stuff that we've been told for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries and um uh, so we're circling this heart opening energy, right? <laughs> the karmic energy of that, um, you, you can't, you're not going to be able to love yourself. You need someone to love you. 
and then you've got this feeling building in the feminine, right, that there's something there and it's pushing you forward and what it is is source. But of course it's the same in your twin. So that energy of source is in your twin. So this energy of love that you're seeking is in your twin and it's in you. But because of society's conditioning and the programming we've been running, you're looking it for it in somebody else. Because you've been taught that you'll find it in somebody else, right? Men and women, you've been taught, you'll be finding it in someone else. You're not going to find it in yourself. So these false flames come in as a, like, a, a, like a catalyst or a signifier. Um, in fact, what they're a sign of is that you are entering the completely into the heart opening zone. So they're like empty vessels, basically. For you, they are an empty vessel. What they are to somebody else is neither here nor there, because there could be something entirely to somebody else. But what they come in for you is, it'd be like you're knocking on the door for love because you think this feeling that you want is going to come from them. And you think they're the one. So you're knocking on the door constantly to get them to let you in because you think that feeling that you want is going to come from them and you will just get the door closed in your face repeatedly. And there'll be flat out no's and there'll be an absolute just nothing. So in, ten, in a sense, they're like empty vessels. There's like nothing going on, especially for you. Like I say, maybe for somebody else it's a different matter, but that's between them and what, whatever that is, that agreement is that they've got there energetically. False flames come in to make you open your heart even more to yourself. So you'll go through as many as it takes until you know that you're not going to get that feeling of love from somebody else. And that's why. Because you've got to learn that you won't get that. First, before you can have that feeling of love from somebody else in your twin, which is where it will actually come from, you have to find it in yourself. Nothing is a standalone energy. You might have at the same time, or just um, after these twins, you know, I had five false twins, five of them. They got stronger and stronger and stronger as I went through the process. I met them all before I met my twin. Um, they all looked the same. They all worked in the same field, very creative fields. Um, and I was obsessed by all of them, each of them. I thought each of them, as they came separately, were the one. Complete obsession, complete. And culminating in the last one, which was a very painful experience, thinking it was the one. And completely getting the door shut in my face repeatedly. And then after that, I met my twin. And, but by the time I got to that one, I realised I needed to love myself. So they came each one after the other to teach me to love myself more and to put myself more and to understand that that feeling that I was looking for in somebody else, I had to find it within. I had to find it within me. So that's what they come for, basically. So they're getting you ready. Everything is getting you ready always for this experience. There's no cut and dried, all right? There's no, you could have maybe, you could have a few false flames and you could have a karmic come in. It depends where your energy is at in relation to what you're going to get coming to you. Everything is always an aspect of masculine or feminine energy. Everything on this earth is made of a combination of masculine and feminine energy. Everything can mutate into what it needs to be. That's why sometimes you'll get someone coming towards you. They'll appear to be a heart opener. Within five minutes, they'll have switched into a narcissist. Because energy is mutable as it comes through people. There's no like, I am this. We are not robots. Things are mutable. Things can change. So, like I say, you might get a great big karmic. You might get several little ones. You might get a false twin here and there. Uh, signs, synchronicities, everything on this path that you come into is getting you ready. Everything is getting you ready for your twin. Early life, I had someone with my twin's name, same build same everything about him apart from he did not have his heart open i then had someone with the same birthday as my twin everything about him except i was not the one for him he was not the one for me it wasn't but it was a, you know the same thing they, they had little bits of my twin in them little tiny bits um that was getting me ready basically for my twin so I'd know when I met my twin, my twin was the one. And when I met my twin, after the false, these false ones were not like those ones. See, so there's all different types of energy. You can't really just cut it down into these subtypes, but I'm just trying to put some information out of some kind. 
Um, and what else are we going to say? False twins. So everything's a heart opener for the feminine. They're going to come in to make you open up to love for yourself. I don't really know about false twins for masculines. Me not being working from that angle, I couldn't really say what they are. I'd need to hear it from my, maybe I'll ask my masculine when I see him again. And we'll find out about that. I don't think that he's had any, to be honest with you. Maybe he has. I don't think so. Uh, maybe they're just for the feminine. Maybe they are. So anyway, so that is the false flame. And then the other one, heart opening energy. So this one is a really big subgroup, heart opening energy, because this can come through. So this is feminine energy coming through, which means that it's empath, empathic, empathic energy. It's already heart open. The best way to describe this and how you might receive it, because everything's a process, right? So as you go through your process and you're um, magnifying the dark so that you can see it, so the fear matrix is, becomes obvious to you and the things that are operating purely from the dark in the thought consciousness, such as narcissists, that energy that's coming towards you. So you're able to differentiate between what is that. And when you do that, you're able to come out of fear because you're able to just see things as either fear or non-fear, okay? And um, these empty boxes, these like hollow things that are false flames, which are just, again, getting you ready with a heart opening. Um, and then we've got this, um, this heart opening energy completely, right? So this is like, these are like bundles of love, basically. And they've got an energy of it's all different so you can have things like um let me just you see you wouldn't include a lot of your best friends in this you might have one that's in this energy because a lot of those best friends will be karmic attachments that you'll let go of but it's got that kind of best friend vibe so it's somebody that you'll feel like really comfortable around like you can share things with that you can, you've got the same likes and dislikes, you get on really well with it. it's really easy going energy, so it'll be really easy to be around these people one way or another, so it can feel like a friend, um, a very good friend, right from the minute you meet them, just harmony and niceness. Everything that's coming towards you is coming to you from either feminine or masculine. These are primarily feminine because they've got that heart open empathy about them. But they can be aspects of your masculine. So they can come towards you as well with the looks of your masculine. They can be really nice to you and make you feel like you love yourself more. But it's coming to you from outside of yourself now. So now it's getting you ready for being in a relationship with someone else because of what it's doing is replicating the energy that should be coming from the masculine to the feminine that makes the feminine feel comfortable loving again. So it's getting you ready to love again because through all these dark experiences that you go through, your heart shuts down. And then you have to open it to yourself and then you, once it's open to yourself, what's left in there that needs to be cleared is being able to love another again. So the heart opening, people that hold that energy are going to come to you and they're going to lead you to love yourself again. It's not one thing or another. There could be any... What makes you feel that you're worthy and lovable that you didn't even recognize that you needed until even... It just makes you feel better. Things like that. You could take it or leave it because at some point you've got your heart open enough to yourself that you know that you are. It might come as validation on top of that that you are. Um... It's shouting out loud to you, energetically, how amazing you are, how brilliant you are, how lovable you are, how sexy you are, how wonderful you are. So it can come in many, many different ways for the feminine. I had, I'll had i tell you about a funny couple of experiences. One was um, staying in a hotel, and uh, the, a workman at the hotel had just finished fixing my blind, and I came out of my hotel room, and I was looking for loo rolls, toilet rolls, and I shouted up to the woman with a trolley who was upstairs, but she couldn't understand me. So she shouted down to the workman <laughs> to tell me where the, the toilet rolls were. And he got, beckoned me to come with him. And he was really handsome. And he had these eyes that were sparkly and they were gorgeous like my twins. And I followed him. And then he, 
gave me he just kept piling all these toilet rolls into my arms like no no you have more you have more you have more like he was just giving me all these toilet rolls like he couldn't do enough for me and I was laughing because I couldn't carry them all and that's an experience of me drawing towards me masculine energy that made me feel good that was he was just trying to shower I mean he might have been showering me with toilet rolls but it's what it's doing is showering me with love you know so there was that so you might find things like that representations of your twin that are getting you ready to love again you might have a wounded warrior coming towards you that's got his heart open ready for love but maybe he's not ready for love or she so you might get an uh um, like a little replica of your twin in that kind of energy of your twin but they might have the issues that your twins had that means that you can't go there and have love because you know that that's it's not the right thing for you to be going there with someone else that has the same issues of the one that you're connected to you know so but it can just be getting your heart ready again and letting you know that you're loved so it's basically just energy coming through and letting you know that you're loved in uh, whatever way and it feels good and um, the difference between karmics go out really hot, difficultly a lot of them cutting the cord especially if you're in a relationship it's a hard job it's lower energy it's really lower energy really hard work like I say you've got to let go though straight away because they're the hardest to let go of but you've got to let go um, the false flames they come in and they're empty boxes, so there's nothing inside there for you. They may or may not be narcissistic. The thing is, even if they're narcissistic, they're not going to use you for supply because you they're meant to go out of your life. So they might well be, but then um, I feel like these they're operating from such a lack of love in any respect that they tend to go into another relationship with another narcissists so it's that narcissist on narcissist that they're looking for they're not looking for heart energy which is why you won't find it in them when they go out if you were they might sting when they go out but they drop off soon enough because they don't cause you like these karmics if these karmics are really negative when you look back so it'll sting maybe for six months or three months or whatever when you look back down the line of all the people you've loved throughout your life you won't even they won't even feature on it so they tend to just dis disappear from your memory, like magic, like erased from your memory, because there was nothing there in the first place. It was just a, it was just the meaning was to get you ready, right? So it's not really anything at all apart from that. Um, heart openers will stay in your memory forever. You'll always love them. You'll always feel good for them. Uh, that feeling of warmth, of love, of kindness, of support, of protection that you've got from them that will remain forever. Um, the ones that you made feel good, that feel good factor will always be there. So you'll think about that memory like I do about the man in the hotel and you'll get like, you'll giggle to yourself of like how that made you feel, you know. It's all getting you ready to love again, particularly the heart openers. By the time you get to like really... You can have a lot of these coming in towards the end of the journey and um, because you're nearly ready. So the nearer you get to be ready, the more of them will kind of come in, I think. Um, what I've noticed for everybody is one major one comes in at the end of the journey. So you can be assured if you meet somebody that's not your twin and you've been feeling good for a while and life has got easier because you're not purging, and you're not hitting, you're not having to wade through dark energy coming from around you. That if you meet somebody and they're a great big bundle of fluff and, you know, warm and caring and uh, feel like you could just, like, maybe this is it, this is the one, then you can be sure that this is a heart opener. Um, I had an experience with one of these heart openers who was literally like the embodiment of my twin, but with all the hard edges rubbed off. So you know your twin, you get that triggering, which is to make you love yourself as well. So unlike the the false, which is like a brick wall where you don't get anything back, with your twin you get trigger it, triggering constantly. So they don't, um, there is it's never just like a complete negative with your twin. You get a lot of mixed signals, right? A lot of well, I feel like he likes me. I know he likes me. I see the way he looks at me. He's around me all the time. But then they'll say something really horrible or really 
strange or will go off for months and I won't see him again. So you get that mixed messages with a twin which is about triggering self-love. They don't go out. Even when they go out for a separation of 15 years, but th then it's just so you can recognize that you've got an energetic connection with them. So they never go out, ever go out. Um, and then for that, that triggering has to take place. Um, so by the time you got to the end of all this and you're in awareness of source and you become source because you're feeling good all the time, then you're going to get one of these big heart openers come in. Um, I was going to say, I've read it, I've seen it for people. Um, and also, uh, I know it's coming for me. Um, I thought I had one, but that wasn't it apparently. There's one coming, big one coming, big wave. And... Um, what was I going to say? I was going to tell you about one of these that I had. So this one was literally in the embodiment of my twin with all the hard edges rubbed off. Yes, yeah, so with all the... Tr he was like my twin if my twin had not had that... had to go through the dark experience himself and take on board all that because that's what made my twin trigger me. His dark experience and his lack of self-love, right? So, and we've all got to go through that. But this person that I met was not... Just looked like my twin, felt like my twin, the energy felt like my twin, it was warm and comforting, it was like best friend, it was lovely, there was something sexual there, there, there wasn't, but there could have been, and, um, but it was just like my twin, with, soft, without any of the hardness or any of the um, difficulty or the trickiness, so um, maybe like that as well. Um, but we'll have to see, because I haven't had my last heart, heart opener come in, like I say, but um, you might recognise yours from that. And, um, you know, there's many mutations on this. There's not like, it's not just that. But I think in that video, that's all we're going to say. Um, like I say, karmics can be lighter or darker. A lot of them are very narcissistic, but not necessarily so. Some are quite benign. Um, and you've got to look at the, you know, look at you, look what's going on with your twin as well, because the, sometimes the car, whatever karmic that your twin's with, if you look at that and that person they're with, you see, that's all about triggering you into more self-love. So, um... Look at what it is about that karmic that they're involved with that makes you feel the lower end of the spectrum of emotions, right? And those are the things that you're clearing. I mean, it's really quite simple if you look at it that way. So whatever comes up when you look at the karmic that you're twins with, whatever you feel, that is what you're clearing. So it could be, for example, that the karmic that they're with say they've got um oh i don't know like a really good job or something like a really you know a, a career like a career that's uh seems to all be on track or something and you've never held down a job your whole life so when that comes up in relation to you looking like that what it's about is about you clearing a lack of love for yourself in relation to that so your twin is going to choose somebody who's doing something or represents something in you that you need to let go of about disliking yourself or unloving yourself. And that will be, be specifically why they've chosen that person. So masculine's always going to trigger the feminines in that way. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. I think we're going to leave that one there. We might come back to it in another one at some point. I hope that's helped in some way. And, um, of course, there will be loads more to say. If you've got anything that you'd like to add that you think is valuable, leave it in the comments below. And um, I don't really like coming in the comments to discuss things because I do find it gets a bit ego -y. But if you've got any question, um, that you know, a general question then you can put that, any other video you'd like me to make, put that as well, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so that's it for this. Lots of love. Take care, bye.